My name is Karan Nandwani. I'm a PM on the NuGet team. Today we'll be looking at how you can secure your NuGet package ecosystem. Uh, in the recent past, we have there has been an increase in the number of supply chain attacks, and they have made the news. Um, we have seen uh, that there has been a propensity for using package managers as the as the mode of attack for some of these things. Uh, today, let's let's look let's recap some of these incidents and see what we can learn from them. So, Homebrew is a package manager that you can use to uh, install software on Linux and Mac OS. And uh, there are many use cases here, such as setting up a dev box really quick with the essential tools that, that a new developer might need. Now, in this case, uh, as last, sometime last year, a security researcher was able to get access to the core Homebrew repositories. They had commit access to these repositories, which means they could have made a change, and that change would have flown to anybody that, that ran Homebrew update or uh, recently installed uh, Homebrew, and they would have gotten their malicious uh, formulae. Now, the takeaway really here is that there was no way for the end user to protect, them, protect themselves. So really what we are asking is there should the tools that a package manager should be able to detect if a package has been tampered and block installing such packages. In addition, there should be a way for package authors to stamp their identity on a package. And the, on the other end, for a package consumer to be able to validate this identity and uh, confirm that this package truly came from who, who it says it came from. In a separate incident last year with NPM, the, the NPM account of the, uh, of the maintainer of a really popular package was compromised. The attacker went on to publish a malicious update that, uh, that got, got into 4,500 accounts and got their credentials before, before it was taken down. Now, this was, we should understand that this was not uh, a, uh, a fault on the NPM JS side. Uh, the, the attacker was able to get the password and username for the maintainer from a third party leak and was able to reuse it to gain access to the maintainer's NPM JS account. So the clear takeaway here is that uh, username and password security is simply not enough. In a separate incident, a attacker uses a, a different uh, vector uh, to target, uh, target package users. They published a p several packages that, that looked very similar to a very, very popular package, which has over two and a half million weekly downloads. The, they then went on to, uh, this, th these were all malicious packages uh, that, that harvested environment variables from the victim's machine, and this attack went unnoticed for nearly, for nearly two weeks. So the key takeaway here is that repositories, popular repositories should be able to uh, detect and block typo scoring attempts. In addition, there should be a way for users to define which, which publishers they really trust. And if a package uh, does not meet that specification, it should fail to install. Now, let's take a quick look at what, what does a typical NuGet workflow looks like and what are some of the best practices. So let's say I have an awesome library that I want to share with the world. And the obvious next step there would be to create a NuGet package. The first best practice here uh, would be to author sign it. Now, author signing it allows me to stamp my identity on the package. And on the consumption side, it allows the consumer to validate that this package really came from me. Next, I want to publish this package to, let's say, NuGet.org. Last year, we NuGet.org adopted uh, MSA-based authentication, which allows users to opt into 2FA. Now, setting up 2FA is really easy. It is literally three steps after you log into NuGet.org. Now, if you are an enterprise customer that uses Azure Active Directory to log in, you can ask your admin to enable uh, 2FA, and it's just that easy. Uh, and as we have seen, enabling 2FA would have prevented several of these attacks that, that we looked at. The next step here really is to publish this package to nigger.org. Now, when a package is being pushed to nigger.org, we actively check if this package ID looks very similar to an existing package. And if it does, we block it from publishing at that point itself. After it passes that, and it does not look similar to an existing package, it undergoes several checks to see, uh, including virus scanning, to ensure that this package is safe for consumption. Once it passes these checks, NuGet.org then signs it with, with its own repository signing cert. 
Uh, this way, you can be guaranteed that this package is truly coming from NuGet.org, even if you are using it through, let's say, ADO, using an upstream source, or this package or rehosted on an internal feed, etc. Now, let's look. This was the publishing side of things. Let's see what we can do when you're consuming these packages. So, to begin, we have something called as client trust policies. This allows a package consumer to define policies that say, I want to trust a, a package that has been authored by a certain author, or I only want to trust packages that come from a specific feed, let's say nuget.org, and you can get more specific by saying only by these specific users or accounts. Let's take a look at a quick demo of how you can do this uh, in your day-to-day -day flow. So I have a, a, a solution that is NuGet Cleaner. I'm working, I've been working on this side project for a while now, along with the new PM on the team. And I want to implement client trust policy. The first thing that I did here was add a new nuget.config file. And this file is at the solution level. This is necessary to isolate uh, the settings that I want to apply to this solution from the other solutions that I might have on my machine. So the first thing I really want to do here is, is uh, start using, uh, is start validating signatures when the package is being installed. The way you would do that is by setting the signature validation mode to require. What this does is every time you install a NuGet package to any project in the solution, it will check that the package has a valid signature. Now, this happens at, at the time of installation, which means when the package is being extracted, it checks for this signature, and then that point onwards, it, that package is assumed to be safe. Hence, it is a best practice to add a new global packages folder, which is exclusive for the trusted packages that you want to use with the solution. The way you can do that is simply by using by adding a new key called global package folder and defining that folder. Now, let, let me quickly uh, close the solution and reopen it so that the new config can take effect. All right, so let's try to install some NuGet packages into this, into this uh, project. I'm gonna try to install neurons.json, and what do we have here? The package failed to install, although it has a valid uh, signature. The reason for that is, we, although we said we want to validate uh, packages on installation, but we did not really specify what, pa what packages or sources we, we, we trust. So the next thing to do here is define uh, NuGet.org as, as a trusted uh, package source. The way you can do that is using the NuGet trusted signers command, and you can say add the, uh, a new, new trusted signer and say NuGet.org, and what this does is it'll go out to nuget.org, figure out what is the right fingerprint for the, for the packages that are signed by nuget.org, and insert it in your config file. So I'm gonna once again reload my solution for the settings to take effect, and let's try to install that package again. And as expected, this package now successfully gets installed. But what if you told me that I, I want to uh, have more fine-grained control over the kind which users on, uh, or which package owners on nuclear.org I trust. You can easily do that by specifying owners, and in this case, I'm gonna say, I trust James and K, and I trust any package that is published by Microsoft. Awesome. So let's reload our solution again, and we're gonna try to install a bunch of more packages. So I already installed J Newton's out of JSON. I'm going to try to install this one from Microsoft. It should, you know, it sends, tells me license acceptance, goes through, perfect. Now, what if I install, try to install a package which was, say, something like this, castle.core, and as expected, it did not, it did not get installed because although it is, it has a valid signature, it is not in our list of trusted signers. So, to summarize, client trust policies allows you, uh, guarantees you package authenticity and integrity. That is, you're guaranteed that this package truly comes from who it says it comes from, and that the package has not been tampered with after it was created or published to Nigerar. Now, in addition to client trust policies, you can also use lock file. What lock files do is they store the uh, hash of the package content and when a package is being restored, it validates this content hash against the package which is being restored. 
if the match if the content hash does not match it fails the restore and ensures that a, a, a package does not a, a bad package does not find its way into the into your uh, NuGet uh, dependency chain. Um, and to close the loop here, we have hosted a first class uh, and highly available symbol server on NuGet.org. This allows package uh, owners to publish symbols using the new SnubKeg format. The new SnubKeg format uses a secure portable PDB for symbols. This also allows you. Uh, this also allows you to sh uh, and securely debug your debug your NuGet packages. Uh, and to make things easier, NuGet.org Symbol Server is listed as one of the default sources in Visual Studio. The added security here is that the NuGet the DLLs in the NuGet have a checksum for the PDBs, which means that uh, when you're debugging, the Visual Studio debugger will actually. Uh, validate that this checksum matches and uh, provides for a secure debugging experience. Now, let's take a, a sneak peek at uh, what we, what we have coming up uh, in the next uh, next few releases. We will be integrating with uh, GitHub token scanning service. What this means is, if you inadvertently uh, re, uh, checked in one of your Nigerian API keys, within seconds we will be able to uh, detect. Uh, detect that uh, and uh, and delete that API and uh, disable that API key and also notify you. This will ensure this will minimize the uh, the potential for malicious use of anything that has be the, any API key that you might have leaked. Uh, also, we are working on a new feature that helps you identify and flag vulnerable packages anywhere in in your dependency graph. This includes any packages that you take any packages. It, this includes your transitive dependencies as well. And this will allow you to proactively update your dependencies to a, a one to the to ones that have do not have these vulnerabilities and ship more secure code and pro, and applications to your customers. So for anything that we looked at today, uh, you want to know more, uh, go to AKMS slash secure NuGet and you, you have we have links for everything there. Um, that's all we have for from from the NuGet perspective. Thank you very much. All right, I'm excited to be here, Mika. Me too. So we have just come into frame because I was singing like some Spice Girl yeah, stuff too busy. over there, yeah. and they're like, "Hey, Seth." <laughs> the director's like, Stop "You singing. need to go in there right now, right now, yeah, because." You know, you're not a very good singer when it comes to the Spice Girls, number one. And number two, you're kind of working and you're like, you're on Seth, the clock. Let's, let's get in there. Yeah. Maybe do something. Yeah. All right, so what do we got here for a new post? Uh, looks like uh, we are done for today. Thank yeah. you so much for that. Yeah, that was thank awesome. You. The cool thing about NuGet, the cool thing about NuGet that I like is that it allows you to share code, but that's also the bad thing about NuGet. So it's good to have all of this. This infrastructure to make it a little safe. Do we got anything else in there? Um, yeah, Ryan actually um, is s talking about securing NuGet packages that build. Super pumps about this session. Oh, so fantastic! So, so yeah. securing NuGet. Like I said, the cool thing about NuGet is that you can share stuff, but that's also a bad thing about NuGet. Okay, so look, we are done in Studio A for today. Yes. Is that right? Yes, we are. Okay, yeah. so what we're gonna do. What we're going to do is we're going to now toss it over to Studio C. Yeah. So you can still ask questions on the .NET Conf hashtag, but I'm probably going to go home and like have like take a, a dinner and then maybe go to sleep yeah. or something. Yeah. Take a nap, sing some more uh, Spice Girls. What we're going to do is we're going to have Jeff come in here because uh, right now, uh, come on over, dude. As he's coming, we're going to toss over to them. You had the party last night too, right? The after thing? We had the after party last night. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. The after party party. Okay. And so were you wearing that? <laughs> no. Okay, so time. so now this time we're gonna have like an extra party. So looks like you're you're muted right there. So Am what I? we're gonna why don't you why don't you talk into the small talk of my chest you. here? Hi Seth, it's so good to see you. How are you? Flip buddy? This <laughs> over so that I'm not muted. Oh, now he's on. Am I on? Can you hear me now? Yeah, no, yeah. you were on before, but uh, not with the mic. 
I see. Yeah. We're professionals. <laughs> so let's go show them where Studio C is. Let's go for a let's walk. Let's go, Mika. Let's All go right, show yeah, them. let's so do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go out here. I'll open the door for you because no one ever gets to see Channel 9 Studio the way I do. So no. this is Channel oh 9 Studio. Yeah. I was off. So let's come over here. Wait, come here. I'm going to, I want you to meet someone. Come, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Closer. Closer. <laughs> this is Beth Massey. She is the one that did all of the work. We just stand around and look pretty. Here, look, speak into this right here. Tell, tell, tell. I love you all. Thank you so much. We had such a great and event. And we adjusted the mic so that she could literally, could literally talk, talk right, right, into, right it. into it. Right? Do you see this? This was all planned by our wonderful studio people. So we're going to have you back up here. Let's come over here. Let's go for a walk. Let me show you all the buttons that they push. I'm going to try to push some buttons, and if anything <laughs> happens, just let me know. This is where all the buttons happen, right? This is the director here, Cameron, Cam Cam. Golnaz Yay. tells us what to do, and we do it mostly out of fear. <laughs> so there is that. And so these buttons, she says, never to push, okay? <laughs> this means that we're recording it, right? Come, on, come over here. So that way, <laughs> at, at the end of 24 hours, all of this stuff, all of the hot little bits are going to be in your hands as well. So should we go back to Studio C? Let's take a walk. Right, come on, let's come I this way. I think it's about time. Let's come this way here. So it, you don't oh, want to turn yes. your back. Is that awkward for No, now? no, no. So i got to cross over. over. Here. So this is Studio C. Obviously, it says warning. Anything in this room can be live streamed. So we're going to go in here. So let's open it up. There we go. Okay. Hello. And fantastic. Oh, and my goodness. This is now where the magic is going to happen afterwards. So why don't you come in here. Here. Join us. Hello. Very good. Oh, my gosh. So we're about to go live live. 24 hours straight on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Visual Studio. If you're out there, if you're watching on Twitch, click that follow button. You want to follow along. You want to know what's happening because we've got lots more content after .NET Conf for you. But we've got our crack team of hosts all throughout the day. You're going to see a bunch of folks hosting, showing content throughout the day. Right. Every time zone. So they are telling me to rap in my ear because I have a special earpiece that makes me get into really special places all the time. It's really fantastic. So we're going to wrap it up here with the uh, .NET Conf from Studio A. Oh, they tell me to keep talking. So Javier here is the other mastermind that you may not hear. Let me scoop down so you, you, can, uh -huh. you, can, you, you can talk into. He does all of the website stuff, and he brought up a beautiful dashboard. You're welcome. That, hold on, let me get closer. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So here, here's how technical we are. Look at I this. Double keyboard. Two keyboards. Because I have to. This is a two this. keyboard I, show. It is. A, I mean, it's great. And there's more buttons. Oh, look at all these buttons. Oh, yeah. There's buttons. Don't everywhere. push this one. No, no they uh -huh. told us that this will cause issues. It is not good. It there's is. literally an X there that says don't push it. But I kind of want to push it. All right. No. So before we go, we'd like to say thank you for those that were with us in Studio A. We're going to turn it over to Studio C after a short little break, but to go to twitch.tv front slash visual studio to continue all of the joy and the fun. Make sure you tune in. See you there. Hit the button.